What's going on? So this is day three of me being at Joe's crib. And we've been pretty much rearranging. He's had t sneakers in his collection for 20 years in a, in a garage in humidity. So I basically, to get to this point of the video, I've sifted through stuff that was like not wearable, oxidized, crumbled. Um, and this is what's left of the good stuff of the stuff that he hasn't seen in 20 years. So I've rearranged the room a little bit and he's gonna come in here and he's gonna sift through a couple boxes. He hasn't even seen what I found. So Joe's gonna come in and uh, look at what's going on and then we're gonna check out where all the real heat is. And Joe's gonna share a couple stories, talk about some of his favorite shoes in the collection, what got him into collecting. So sit back, enjoy the video and uh, make sure to comment what was the craziest shoe you've seen, what was your favorite shoe you liked and what more do you wanna see in videos like these. Yeah, man. Incredible day. So I've always had sky blue Rolls Royces and uh, Nike had, they just said, yo, Joe, we're gonna send you some Rolls Royce uh, Air Force. Did Legendary. You, did you get any, you got wears out of this one, right? You wore this one? Yeah, I wore this one, I ain't wear this one. It's, you know? it's crazy. I mean, to have a relationship to the point where they're like, yo, you know what? My man's just picked up a new car. Well, you know, it's out of time. Now, you know, a lot of this collection I haven't even seen in 20 years, uh, 15 and given count, like I've been collecting over, well, over that. But this collection is probably the last 20 years, right? right? We keep finding boxes, 1998, 2002, right. 2004. But I realized the way Politics are with, with Nike and the sneaker game now, we would have never gotten away with this shit 2020. I mean, it was a very different era. And it's, it is it is mm -hmm. wild to see what you guys did looking back. I mean, as we'll see later on in, in the collection, like all the TS mm -hmm. stuff you did, like... That's... Well, the TS, TS is one of a kind. You see, TS... We got them right you know, you it's, it's it. priceless. You know what I'm saying? There really isn't no... Well, well it's a piece to... of history that will never come out again. This is it. Once you get through this, it's a done deal. And um, probably the first, I don't want to know, I don't want to say, but probably the first rapper to have collabs, you know, sample. A Don Cartagena. And, and we just found like thing, 40 of them just out here. And you got like another 15, Just to think what kind of like, to think, how many we done did? We done did the pink colorway. We did the gray and pink. We did the gray and green. We did the black and white. You did like we did three of yellow. Each. Like three like, of each, right? Yeah, we did three styles of each. And Here, look, here's the yellow. This is like, the tan boys is like one of my favorite ones you did, bro. And, and that it, solid pink one is crazy. And we was just taking, at the time there was a sneaker out like this, uh, uh, Air Force. Okay. So when it was like, yo, we want to make you one. I was like, yo, I needed that style. Um, I, I forget the original one, but you see the JC in the back. And um, it's crazy because I used to just wear these sneakers every game when I coached the Rucker. You know, this is the Rucker time. Yeah, you so, was killing them then, bro. So I used to go to the Rucker every game with like an exclusive, even a PE or some shit that was like unbelievable. Like you see the pink wave. And I told little Yachty, I got him. You, you see the shit dead stock with the motherfucking, here you go. The moment you've been waiting for. And I'm trying to be real humble about this, but I, I started collecting when nobody was collecting. Okay, so now I understand the kids collect, they resell, they do all that. That's cool. But I, I was you before you was you. So I would go on tour and go to every moms and pop store in the town, whether it was Minnesota, the Midwest, Philly, wherever. I would go up and um, go to the moms and pop store, throw a couple of grand on the counter and be like, miss, let me go in your basement. They'd be like, yo, it's junk in there. It's rusty, the pipes, this. I'd be like, yo, I just want the junk. They didn't know this was retros. These were right. shacks. These was, you right. know, Reebok pumps. They didn't know. Well, you were, you had mentioned to me uh, like a day or two ago off camera that in Minnesota, you had a, a moment where you basically, you bought so much, you had a 
drive back because you had bought. So oh yeah, much. we do that all the time. We we used to do that all the time. We used to go to. I used to fly to UK because there was a little moms and pop store that had it, and just go to the UK, go stock up, and come back. Like, you know, we did this shit for real. You know, what was your personal favorite colorway out of all the TS? My favorite color in life is sky blue, so it would be the sky blue, um, and white. TS's because you know that's just my favorite color regardless. There you go. For me, yeah, I mean that's a great that Baby was a blue. great colorway. For me, I think one of the best ones you guys did was that gray with the lime green, that electric. That I, I know it's that's in something here. we haven't seen a lot of. No. Right? Three days. Three days just shifting through thousands of sneakers and just gems. And for me, I remember where I was at when I bought it. I remember what you know where what what store. I remember, and I'm going through all that, you know. But to tell you the truth, I haven't been able to like really, really enjoy my collection. It, it, I feel like I'm almost a hoarder. You know what I mean? Uh, with you the see cursive. the JC and cursive. and cursive, and then you got the green Air Max 95 colors. You know, um, and so, you know, it's like I can't even see this shit. You know what I mean? Most of the shit I can't even see. You're gonna see when we get inside is a whole nother bunch right. of shit. Then in New York, I got a whole nother fucking collection. So it's just like, I, I don't know what to I, do. I'll guys. say this about- I haven't lost my passion for collecting. I'm gonna keep collecting. But it's like, what do you want me to do? I'm running out of- You're out of room. Run. I mean, every sneaker enthusiast that's a hardcore collector gets to this moment where you recognize- Yo, I've ran out of me room. Kike, pasame ese tawaya, por favor, like. It's Miami, about a thousand degrees in so, the garage. So you recognize I've run out of room. My room's not going to get any better. Even though you could keep buying bigger yeah. spaces, you're not doing this for the bread. I you're just doing can't this. keep doing that. At one time, I had an apartment in Jersey that was just strictly for sneakers. And there was no furniture on there. It was just sneakers. It's I would open the door, dump the new 20 sneakers I bought, come back in two more days, dump another 10 sneakers I bought. It's just, it's, it's, you know, it's out of control. Uh, is it an emotional day for me? Yes, it is. I didn't think it would get to this point. Two J's has become the new Jerry Maguire. He made Maya cry. He's almost gonna make Fat Joe cry. Uh, he's just, he's the new Jerry Maguire with this shit. But um, I love Two J's, his story, his passion, where he comes from. I buy into people and their, and their, and their flaws and their triumphs. And that's why if every other person I know that does sneakers, it's like, damn, Joe, why you didn't bring them to me or whatever? You know, I fuck with his story, his life story and how hard he's dedicated to the game, how hard uh, he works to employ people and take care of other people and pick them up, you know, and, that, and that's really why I chose 2Js to you let know. this thing go. Cause don't get it fucked up. If you was a clout chaser, 2Js is gonna get a lot of clout off of this fact. Motherfuckers ain't get their hands on no Fat Joe shit. Fat Joe ain't selling. Fat Joe ain't selling. He good. He, yeah. he good. So it's like, you going to get it? No, I'm gonna, I'm, you going to get a piece of that history? I'm going to say We this. got a bunch of sneakers. To, I would have never sold it, but 2J's was like, yo, they want it. The shit's crumbling. And 2J's like, nah, they want a part of it. So look, I'm going to say this. I think that, I mean, I, I'm I'm extremely hum humbled by what you're saying about about my brand and myself and, and what we've been able to accomplish over the years. It's people like yourself, Mayor, that have shown me what what needs to be done in life to get to where you wanna be, mm -hmm. to be able to provide the way that you provide for mm -hmm. the countless amount of people that mm -hmm. don't even get spoke about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm, I, I see it, you give me the motivation, I'm thankful that you're allowing mm -hmm. my brand to be the outlet to continue to let these breathe mm -hmm. and go out to the people that appreciate, respect, mm -hmm. idolize, and are hardcore sneaker enthusiasts. I'll take it back to this shoe. Well, you know, you got, there's something we did deliberately. Uh, we, we're giving you PEs, we're giving you stuff that obviously you need money to get this. Big money, right? Because these are prices. These ain't coming again. Nike, you should take key the first one that ever had a collab with Nike. These sneakers here, you, these things are worth so much. You know, Nike, they need to start thinking about letting it go for the regular people, TS Air Force Buds. But we also bought regular sneakers, 
right. that you could probably afford where you could feel like you're part of yeah, yeah, yeah. the fat joke collection. So I think collection. there's going to be stuff from as little as, you know, 40, 50 bucks and up into exactly where you expect a iconic, never seen before, PE, a uh, 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 one-off gem. Um, you know, when it comes to these forces, you created something that technically shouldn't exist. And mm -hmm. it became, over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. one of the most spoke about sought after air forces in the history of air forces yeah like you mayor and clark mm -hmm. are new york and air forces mm -hmm. like you guys are the goats of yeah. forces and to see how many are like you i told there's you there's a thing with fat joe and i'm trying to stay humble but there's a thing with fat joe that people always seem to never want to give the credit what credit is due this collecting shit I was on this shit no, early. No, you, you was, uh, you was my on shit ain't to be played you, with. You, orange box era. Bro. The orange box king. It's it's not to be played with. You can't fuck around. Okay, so be lucky that I'm giving you a piece of this nostalgia. So these other sneaker collectors who want to throw subliminal shots, you could not fuck around on your best day. I'm going to still talk my shit. Oh, yeah, we got some Waynos coming your way. I'm going to keep... I got two other Waynos dead stock. I'm going to keep look. Wayno, dead stock. Final four, dead stock. What you know about them final fours, man? Dead stock. Y'all, you know. So give them, give them a couple, Joe. Just for since some people say they never seen them in person. We got a bunch of cartoons. I'm keeping a bunch of cartoons myself. We got the brown prize coming your way. That's for the Vatos Loco, baby. All right. Representing them Latinos out there. I made a post last night um, talking about what this experience, the Kobe's Air Force One. I... Somebody asked me, a good friend of mine asked me, Jay, what is it like, you know, hanging out with Joe at his house, getting to be able to sift through, you know, essentially almost 30 years of history, right? And I said, the simplest way I could put it is if like, Babe Ruth invited me to his house and said, hey, yo, you remember that bat that I pointed before I hit that home run? This is the bat that I hit that home run with. Um, so it's it, the magnitude of and level of history that's in essentially this garage and another sneaker room and what he has upstate. And it's just, it's wild, man. It's, it's, you couldn't have forecasted this. That now, this this right here, it's a simple sneaker, but I got like, like 10, 10 of them those. because this reminds me of Miami. This got the Sia Sucker. It may not be everybody's favorite, but nah, it's but my favorite. This is a Joe shoe. Yeah. We got to show Terrell this shit. Man. First shoe I ever got was Pro Keds back when I was a baby. And uh, look at these shits. Woo! Look at these shits. Hold up. Yo, you see these? You saw the LA joints? Oh yeah, yo, there was so there was a, a it's a whole pack that it was like all of the five boroughs in New York plus like LA and all that. Compton. Yeah, that's that's a whole vibe right there, bro. Oh man, this this I might have not wanted to see those. Like, you know, I gotta make room. We got a bunch of these. That's, a, that's another shoe that I want to talk Ethiopians. about. Ethiopians. You, I found about seven of those. So what was it about that shoe that made you feel you had to have so many? I just of them, think bro? it was the color wave. Dame toalla, uh, Enrique. I think it was the color wave, the red, the blue. You know what I'm saying? I right. think, I think it was pretty much the color wave. I think it was the color wave. <laughs> This is crazy, right? Because my brother Dre got a so Dre Khaled, they all got sneakers. Dre from Cool and Dre got a lot of a lot of air for it. So the other day he came to the studio, he was stunting with these. And I was looking at him, I was like, all right, you know, I don't want to tell everybody I got them. But uh, yo, Dre, I got them. <laughs> and so uh damn, remember these? Shit. Uh, Cortez. <laughs> What's one pair 
We had a lot of these too. Yeah, you had beige, the camo. green. That was a good era camo. too. The mint, they did the, the bottoms of them are camo too. Yeah. Now them shits are sick. But you know, shit everywhere you look, man. And so I, I was telling people this is regular, but it's still fly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, hold up. Yeah, this is regular, yeah. but it's fly. And so, but, and, um. This not regular, and it's fly. <laughs> and I used to tell them all the time they couldn't fuck with me. And now I know why they never challenged me. Because they couldn't fuck with me. And so, Every box heat, bro. Levels of the shit. Every box, man. It's heat. Look at this shit. And so nobody really has gotten to see this whole collection. Because if I ain't see it in 20 years, nobody's seen it. You know what I'm saying? My wife is thrilled. This shit is finally getting the fuck up out of here. Um, to only build on new shit. There's only newer shit going on. Look at these shits. Sneakerheads are gonna be able to literally see See this shit? Inside. Yeah, with your initials on the back of it. The JC, right? No, three. What no, Sean three? Carter. Sean Carter. This is the Four Horsemen. This is the Jay-Z's, Papito. Stand clear. Yeah. This is, this is a serious one. Hey, you yeah, might yeah, want to yeah. put that, that over that, there, Papito. That shouldn't be in here. That's all I'm trying to tell you, man. Is there any box you look in, you don't know what you're going to find. You know, I was sitting here like a baby. Look at that. I was sitting here like a baby with two J's, like, trying to see what, what he was going to find, you know. Look at these. Another pair of those seersucker Miami. You know. Listen, man. Joe Crack's collection is like... Uh, it's like hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Like the birth, you know what I'm saying? There's the sneaker heads and you know, what's so beautiful about sneaker culture, it keeps growing and growing, you know, but we gotta remember where it all started. And you know, Joe Crack is one of the, the guys that started the sneaker game, you know what I'm saying? And, and took it to the next level, you know what I'm saying? And um, I had to drive over here in the golf cart because I heard that he's getting rid of some of his collection and I keep telling him, you know, make sure you put one on the side for me. And he keeps telling me some weird language like, yo, Kyle, they go for 30K, they go for 20K. But I said, what that got to do with me, though? You know what I'm saying? So this is when you test the friendship. This is like the true test of the friendship. So I'll let you know how the outcome comes. Um, Asa, say hi. Hi. What type of sneakers you wear? Michael Not Jordan. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this is pretty nuts. These TSs mean a lot to me. Because they were from the Lean Back video. You see the sample in the inside, Don Cartagena. Uh, you know, cartoon, another Latino who got an Air Force One. So I got all the cartoons. Very important to me. Um, stuff I won't part ways with. This is special to me. I actually wore these in the uh, the Wainos. People have these, but it's special to me. My colors. Uh, it's like a fancier linen. Um, but I wore these in Make It Rain video. You see the Holy Grail up here. This is the shit I could never get rid of. Um, I've been off for 60000 for this sneaker. Um, you know what it is. TS on the tongue. Sheesh. Show you the grapes. The TS grapes. We got, uh, this is amazing to see in person, bro. Um, like 30 years of nonstop chasing. And this is the room that's got all this stuff you don't see every day or people don't even know that they exist. Team Don, baby. Joints. These are the Macklemore joints. See the Wahlburgers. We got the vibes here. Vibe magazine joints. Playstations. Real deal. Not from Canal Streets. Kobe Denims. 
This is really y'all. Uh, I don't think I'm getting rid of these. I think I'm keeping these. You're gonna get your crack at these. These are going with you. These are gone. These are going with you. These are going with you. <laughs> you know, I want to make some other people happy. You know what I'm saying? Baby color wave. Folks. The uh Kobe shit ain't going nowhere. Kobe uh Kobe package ain't going nowhere. Staying right here. To say you can't fuck with me is an understatement, to be honest with you guys. But I look forward to taking it another notch, another level. Um, we the best to stay, you know that. But just taking it another notch, taking it another level. Consolidation is the is key. See y'all soon. So at this part of the video, Urban Necessities is now three weeks into having Fat Joe's collection at the shop. And I know you guys probably think we're sitting on our hands, but the reality of it is it's been a lot of work, right? A lot of behind the scenes work that kind of gets overlooked by a lot of the people that are watching and just waiting for us to drop this collection. To kind of give you an idea of how much labor or how labor intensive it is for my brand and myself to go and acquire a collection of this magnitude. I have two consignment intake staff members that have been working 40 hours a week for the last three weeks solely on Fat Joe's collection. That's 240 hours. I've had three people cleaning shoes 40 hours a week for the last three weeks, which is 120 hours a week, and it's 360 hours of cleaning shoes for the last three weeks, 1500 plus pairs to be exact, have had to get cleaned. Even some of his DS stuff needed to get cleaned because it's sat in a garage anywhere between 15 or 20 years. And then on top of that, I've had Earn and Charlie for the last three weeks, 40 hours a week also, actually a little bit more, but we're just gonna say it's 40 hours a week, another 80 hours, another 240 hours, invested into taking pictures, creating watermarks, creating templates, and putting it on Urban Necessities website. And then we had to wait for the certificates that we ordered that are now going to manually get written and template the name of the shoe put on every single one of these. So long story short, it was over a thousand hour investment not even counting the four days that I personally spent at Joe's crib figuring out what pile what goes into and getting it out of his house and then the three days that it, we spent to drive it here. So pretty costly investment, um, but one that you know we're honored and excited to be able to do because it's not every day that you get the opportunity to one, hang out with a legend and someone that was so influential within the culture over the last 30 years. I've made it no secret that I've been a big Fat Joe fan and a Terror Squad fan, you know, pretty much my whole life. And to get the opportunity to befriend him through, you know, through sneakers and, and people that have kind of co-signed and validated that what we're doing is going about it the correct way and that it merits going to the man's house. It's pretty dope, man. You know, I didn't I didn't think that I'd ever have the opportunity, but now that we're here and we're doing stuff like this, you know, with the Mayor Collection and Vandal and just running around and finding these creative ways to unearth all these gems that have been truly forgotten about, it's, it's a real honor and a privilege and, and uh, I hope you guys appreciate what's going on. So I have 23 pairs of shoes here that I brought to my house to show off that are part of Joe's collection. And I brought them here, honestly, because we're running out of room, the lighting isn't the best, and these are the shoes that I thought I either needed to talk about, show you, or share it, because it's, it's pretty cool shit. Let's start here. Terror Squad Air Force Ones. Joe had about 50 plus pairs 
of Terror Squad Air Force Ones. And what's wild about this is that some of these shoes that I have, like this one, um, you know, very simple, but it has a Don Cartagena writing on the inside, Terror Squad logo. I want to say this was patent leather at one point, but because of sitting in the humidity and the heat, it's kind of gone away and you could actually see it's bubbled up a little bit here and there. Um, him and his, and his uh, another guy that used to be part of the squad um, have these, right? They only made size 11s and size 12. Joe's a 12. Some of these he had, he still had seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pairs of. Some of these he only had one, right? The white on red, extremely simple, but still classic. This was one of my favorite pairs that he had in the collection. He also had other colors, right? Now the black, white combo is just crazy. The leather on this, this is probably one of the cleaner pairs that he had. At this point in time, you know, something like this in this condition, it's like a $5,000 shoe. And you know, over the years, we'll come back, we'll look at this video and it's probably gonna keep going up if it stays DS. I'm kind of bummed that they're not my size because I'd love to, you know, obviously have a pair to wear but i'm kind of happy that they're not my size because this is history this is art and you you don't want to these aren't coming back at least not to my knowledge i'd love to see nike one day reach out to joe or joe reach out to nike and maybe one day there's the opportunity that they do like an anniversary like a 30 year anniversary 40 year anniversary and the air force swan terror squad comes back out joseph cartagena on the on the back on both shoes and then here's the other thing is that some of these if you look at this one what you're gonna notice he had he also had so like let's say it was a black and white he would have multiple variations of the black and white right so he would have some that had this would be a white stripe then this would be different um which was really really dope um so there's the black and white colorway there was the the my favorite which was the i kept calling them the tan boys um you know a reference to something he said on a track back in the day but this yellow is just crazy man really really dope he also had what we have at the stores the the pink one that he wore in the lean back video which is like that's great but this one now he had this gray one which was the Joseph Cartagena was in, in script, but if you get your hands on this one, understand this is the only one Joe had. This is the only one Joe had that was gray and pink. And Joe's a sucker for pink. Like he's big in the Easter colors, kept talking about Miami vibes, Miami this, Miami that, and that, that the pastel colors were it. It's a beautiful shoe with that gray, man. You know, so had that one. He had a lot of variations. The pinks is what he had the most of still, right? Um, I want to say he had six pairs of these that he gave us. Um, and they're all going to range between 2,500 to 5,000, depending on the condition of the shoe. You know, the way that I, I can't really share too much of the story of how these came about, but it's not the, it's not the normal hey influencer or artist or athlete here's a brand that wants to work with you let's make it happen this was more uh it was a it, let's just say it was a unique situation right and 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 the chances of replicating how this came about is very unlikely to happen again we're sitting on artifacts that aren't supposed to exist the baby blue pair he wore these a lot. He had a lot. He had. He mentioned that he had a lot of these back in the day. When I think of Joe, and I think sneakers, and I think New York, and I think, you know, the era that he really, like, cemented himself in the '80s, '90s, early 2000s. Air Force Ones was like the sneaker for an entire coast. And so now you think New York, you think sneakers, you think Air Force Ones. And you can't help but think that or assume that publicly Joe's probably one of the top 
three in my opinion when it comes to air forces and sneaker collecting you know the other two people i put in that category are mayor and clark clark kent i don't think there was three bigger names when it came to air forces that made more ripple effects than these three gentlemen i think it's a three-headed monster for the city of new york when it came to forces joe had some wild stuff man and one of the one of those wild pairs that he had was the you know the damon stoudemire the biggie air force one who his nickname was biggie but he was really you know he had the mighty mouse tat and he really looked at himself as this little guy who was a man amongst men and stoudemire was a baller man this was an era where a lot of athletes that were signed to nike were getting air forces and they were getting some cool colorways and getting to play with some great materials the liners leather the insoles leather I mean, look at it, bro. This is this is fire. Oh, really great shoe. Now, all of these shoes also, like I mentioned earlier, are going to wind up getting... They're going to come with a certificate of authenticity for every pair of sneakers that Joe was selling. He didn't sell everything. He, he coughed up a little over 1,500 pairs. He's not done collecting. You know, the one thing that I've noticed when you get to this level, right? You have to get, you have to be okay with downsizing, right? Because the rooms that you put your sneakers in normally doesn't get any bigger, right? And your interest changes. And you also have to somewhat be conscious of where the, the value of, of the dollar is with these items, because you have one shoe, you may or may not like it, you may or may not love it, but that one shoe might be able to cover the cost of the next 50 pairs, 100 pairs, 3000 pairs, you know? Could be one or a hundred. So in this box, I mean, it's kind of tough for me to hold this because of my Mets bias, but you got a Yankee High Air Force One quilted, like stitching here, pinstripes, you know, the Yankee writing cursive on the back. And Joe's a big Yankee fan, um, understandable, coming from the Bronx. The White High Air Force One is always a shoe that is uh, a staple and having something with the pinstripes and the gum sole um i, I guess this is a a, a must-have for any yankee air force one enthusiast the rolls royce air force one now um mixed stories about this one right joe mentioned that this was given to him by Nike because he had a Rolls Royce that was powder blue at the time. But the 410 represents the area code that Carmelo Anthony's from, if I'm not mistaken. So this was a Carmelo Anthony pair. Rolls Royce Air Force One. And Joe had a few of these, which is really dope. You see the, the, the clear sole is kind of yellowed out at this point, and that's just from the oxidation. But this is another historical pair that he, he didn't even wear. The lace bag's still attached. The orange box arrow, you were, he was on a roll. I mean, hearing him talk about how he, he would go to, you know, these mom and pop sneaker stores and be like, take me to the basement or show me what you haven't sold in years that's sitting in the back. And let's see if anything's a size 12, like, he really did the sneaker thing hardcore for a while and now he owns a couple shops he still has a great relationship with jordan himself and the brand you know one of the he we we talked a couple couple about a week ago and he brought up this conversation well he in conversation discussing about how the relationship is so strong that literally could pick up the phone and and anything could show up at his house. And that speaks volumes of your body of work to have a relationship that they could justify that on the other end. The Uenos. What a crazy release, huh? What a beautiful shoe. Um, this was a Japan exclusive um, and has become one of the most iconic sneakers in Air Force history. The laces are totally different um liner leather he had multiple pairs of this and he's worn these like not this particular pair but he's worn some of these in rap videos 
this is beautiful man yeah so this was a 2005 release um sakura drop super limited but extremely dope it's amazing to see how many of these have made it out of japan really dope shoe man this next one box is a little needs a little tlc but the shoe itself means something totally different now huh um kobe bryant air force one and joe has like multiple colorways of the kobe bryant air force one really sad story how this young man passed away you know i've i've spoken in the past how you know how underappreciated i i i really undervalued his career ex except towards the end when when Kobe was really going through the injuries and still duking it out and still trying to get on that court and then still having moments that, you know, are historic. He, here's an example of someone who, you know, had taken their own self-inflicted lumps and really went out of their way to be a great human being. History right here. Man, um, knowing how much Joe is a Knicks fan um, and then thinking about the Knicks were kind of relevant at that time, even though we're in fourth place right now when this video was being filmed for this year. And it's probably the first time the Knicks are, you know, um, have an all-star player in a while. Jeremy Lin. You guys remember Lin Sanity? So Jeremy Lin, Lin Sanity, took over the whole city of New York. And you thought he was like the second coming of, you know, he made New York basketball fun again for a few weeks. And, uh... This is a really dope one. Five Magazine. Complex said, this is one of the greatest Air Force Ones to ever drop. This was to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Vibe Magazine and Joe's got it still with the tag attached to it. This is a, a real gem. This is a real gem. It's top seven. I mean, I, I don't know if I would put it in my personal top seven, but this is definitely like, this to me is probably in the top 50 greatest Air Force Ones of all time. From a colorway, from a significant standpoint. If you weren't in that era, I get it. It's gonna be really hard to, to be like, nah, yeah, that's in there, that's not in there. Um, Vibe was really running stuff for a minute. Like Vibe was TMZ but in magazine form for hip hop. Um, that's probably the best way that I could, I could put it in a nutshell. And you know, Joe's been in there a few times. So this, I know this one was dear to his heart. Now here's, this one excites me and bums me out all at the same time. Chamber of Fear, Air Force One. That used to be all patent leather that's no longer patent leather because of the humidity and oxidation that happened over the years this is a crazy shoe but you could see it i mean look at look at you could see parts still have patent leather some parts don't lebron james has had a lot of dope air force ones a lot of really dope air force ones and this one is up there you know so joe and bibby had a, a mike bibby had a really unique relationship there's I mean, there's enough documentation of these two guys interacting with each other over the years. Joe going to his house, grabbing shoes. These guys almost getting into fights because of some of the shoes Joe wanted out of the collection. And all of it, with all the jokes aside, you could tell these two guys had an admiration for each other and that they really loved each other and that they had a great relationship. And they still do. Um, Joe was really proud of, of being able to say, hey, I have a lot of Bibby shoes. And he really did. I want to say about 50 or 60 pairs that I saw. And that's that's not even counting the stuff where he kept telling me, like, you can't go in here. Not this fault. Like, one of those shoes was the, the Jordan 20. I think this is 20 and three quarters. Here's a team dime. Bibby, Bibby was one of those guys during that era that you, you were paying attention to just as much to his feet as to the game on his court. And on some nights you were paying more attention to his feet than his actual game on the court. He was, he really was with the shits when it came to sneakers. 
So this is called the Work em Low. Another team dime. So it was a team Jordan, but I mean, you can see the yellow, like the patent leather yellowed out just from oxidation. Joe, Joe never wore these. And these are all size 12, 12 and a half. So here's a work em. So that was the home. This is the away. The one thing that I loved about Bibby, man, was that he turned everything into a low. And these are just outright beautiful, man. I like, I, they've lost a little bit of the sheen to it, but still a really dope shoe. You could tell a little bit of chipping from, you know, it's sitting in that garage the way that it did. But if this dropped right now and it had Bibby's number on the back, would you cop? I would. Another, you know, Bibby wasn't left out of the out of the Air Force One thing. Everybody had forces. Leather liner, butter soft leather, just high quality leather on the swoosh. And then the Team Dime logo that was on the shoe. These are dope. They've oxidized a little bit. So far I've shown you 19 of Joe's coolest shoes that he's selling at Urban Necessities. Bibby had a few Air Force Ones. Here you see red team dime logo with the 10 in there as you can see joe liked these you could tell he wore these a couple times amari stadamire i want to say these are you you uh florida colors right here um you know amari's from florida and uh he was part of the brand you know, another clean, high quality shoe. Here's another great Bibby. Um, this one had a lot of laser etched into it. You know, Joe was gifted by Jordan. So I, during this era, Jordan was doing a lot of laser etching. And then this print, they actually made Jordan's face out of this print on a box right as a gift as a personal gift to joe jordan made a fat joe face leather laser engraved into the leather he's got multiple pairs at his store with his face on it made by jordan that's a whole different type of relationship man last but not least joe again had a lot of jordan 9 lows another pe promo pair this one's a size 11, you know, and in true sneakerhead fashion, when you got a shoe that's not your size and they run a little small, you take the insoles out. I have no idea where they are because I didn't see them. Number 28 on the back. Write in the comments who you think that number 28 was. And, uh, you know, that pretty much sums it up for the video. I want to just say thank you for taking the time to hang out and watching this video. And just do me a favor, if you, if you like the video, go ahead and hit like for me. Share the video one time. It's greatly appreciated. Write down in the comments who you would love us to pull up on and grab their collection or show off their collection. I know that there's a lot of people that I'm hopeful and I would love to have those conversations with because I know it's time. I know some of you guys are looking at ways to get downsize your collections and you're looking for a trusted place to do it. Let your boy do it. I'm ready and uh i'm looking forward to sharing it with the world and giving it the right attention that it deserves man so as always guys i appreciate you and i'll catch you on the next one Joe, what's one pair that you got in the collection that you thought you'd never have in the collection? Every box, man. Two J's. What's good, Joe. family? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nah, nah, don't do nah, that. Nah, nah, nah. Right. <laughs> nah, don't do that. Nah, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Yo, this guy don't. paid so much for those. Nah, <laughs> nah this guy paid. <laughs> kicking in with joe and and chris and we just we talking shoes and shit and then like hey look we gonna flip the look there's one 
Cause, Jesus Christ. Right? That? And then I just found another one. I just found one. another one, the Rolls Royce Blue. That's great. Exactly. So that means people oh, really are, are listening to that on their own. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nah. You know it's motherfucking um the record blowing out of control. Just make. Make shit. That wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened. <laughs> Look at all them shits. You see the inside? The Don Carter J. Right, brother. I, that's Joey. I gotta I, I tell you the truth, you need to wear all your shit. Y'all let me just look at what I got right here for you, bro, to look at. Yo, man, you my brother, though, man. Like, Talk to me about these, bro. Man, that's the Big E Air Force Ones, baby. I ain't never seen nobody else have them. I'm sure somebody got it. The crispy as shit. Show them the inside. Sheesh. Get off, but I can't. can't. Just can't. This is you hit Reggie and say, bro, what do we gotta do? Shit's beautiful, bro. What do you mean? The shoe's beautiful. Yeah. That. What's the talk on the streets, man? Cause it's like it's like the Wendy's lady went vegan right now. It's like Joe Crack getting rid of the, the collection. What's the talk in the sneaker world? You gotta understand, your collection is different. There's no one in the world with that. Like, there never will be. It's never gonna happen again. That's why you gotta, like, really... Like, bro, that whoever gets their hands on anything from that is gonna be so... It's a piece of history forever. Yeah, it is. So yeah, it is. Joe said I can't sell these because... Oh, no. How come? We will get fucked up together. <laughs> we are keeping the Noriega back. No, nah, yeah, we're gonna keep these here. Okay. This is this is fire, though, Nori. Noriega, baby. Get him, get Dre now. Get Dre. Yo, Dre, yo, Dre, let me see your face, man, for a second. Yo, get Dre on there. He's executive producer of the whole thing. I can't do a fucking thing without him coming through. He's showing me all his sneaker collection. He got some shit. You know what I'm saying? But y'all, Jay, you're always the executive producer, Jay. You're always the one, man. Yo, Joe, do me the biggest favor. Do me the biggest favor. Keep recording. Keep recording. Do me the biggest favor. Yo, Jay, give him the line of, like, the Wendy's girl, like you told me. Tell him the truth. Oh, no, no, no. This going in the documentary, guys. Yeah. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. Why is it a sad day? It's basically if the Wendy's logo jumped off the top of the Wendy's building and said she's a vegan. I'm dead. I don't do burgers no more. So, cause, cause he's, cause he's shrinking down the collection. It. Getting rid of the collection. I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, but it's only it's only some of the collection I'm getting rid of, Jay. I can understand if it was a situation where he needed it. This man is so rich. Yeah, yeah, but Jay, it ain't about the money. It's, I ain't got no more room, Jay. I'm, listen, buy a bigger warehouse. <laughs> I'm dead. And there ain't but like 200 pairs of sneakers there. All empty shell. Then it finally hit me. I got rid of one of my identities. It's rap, street basketball, graffiti, sneakers. Sneakers is like one of the main... I didn't want to cry. But depression set in. And it was trying to get me. I was depressed. Sitting there, I had to call the mayor. May have got rid of some sneakers, Joe. You still smack anybody? Cause I kept um about a hundred sneakers. Fifty of them are dangerous. Like you, you know, everything I do, competition, music competition, anything I do is competition. 
If I open sneaker stores up in NYC, I want them to be the best quality. I want you to come in in this white marble and fucking candles flowing and people have the greatest experience. Everything I do, I compete. If I get a watch, I make sure it's the watch that nobody can fuck with. I compete with everything. And so I kept like a 50 clip in case somebody wants to think my gun go warm. So don't try to play with me. I still got holy grails. But I figured, let me get rid of a lot of these sneakers that just been sitting here for years and years and years that can make somebody very, very happy. Getting a piece of Fat Joe's never seen before collection. And you know why they never seen it before? Because I've never seen it before. I haven't looked at my collection in 20 years. I got shit from all over. And so it was time to do part with the sneaker collection, 2Js. You know, I call 2Js the new Jerry Maguire. You know, Mayor kept calling me crying and shit when he gave up his collection. But we running out of space. We running out of, like, what are we going to do? And so, as soon as he gets back, as uh, soon as he gets back, um, to Vegas, he's driving cross country now. Uh, he'll put the shit together But y'all see it Shout out to all my friends who call me up Trying to keep uh, Yo, Dre said 2J's What's your cash at? I need the pink and white Air Force Ones TS Yo, Dre PJ Tucker just hit me up for him Lil Yachty just hit me up for him I mean It's a big deal And today Just as I just got rid of my main collection, thousands and thousands of pair of sneakers. I'm looking at a pair of sneakers to buy today. So they got this Obama dunk that they made one of one is Obama dunk with the presidential seal. The shit about to go off on Sotheby's. I'm And so I see a sneaker they made a dunk for Obama, one on one presidential seal. Now I'm looking at every yo. I gotta buy this sneaker. I gotta get the sneaker. And so I'm still in the game, y'all. Still shaking out here.